Hello, my name is Jamie Arnold, and in this video, I will be talking to you about a STEM lesson I created that focuses on bacteria in the classroom. As a new school year approaches, it is never too early to prepare for the upcoming flu season. Each year, we remind students to wash their hands and to cover their mouths when they cough and sneeze. But inevitably, there is still a lot of illness in our schools. Therefore, this STEM lesson was designed to combat this yearly problem and make students more aware of where germs can hide. This lesson begins with the concept of a flipped classroom. The night before the lesson, students will watch a video on swabbing for bacteria samples. Afterwards, they will log in to their Google Classroom and respond to a prompt related to the video. The next day, when students come to class, they will see images of collected bacteria samples from someone's home. They will then respond to the question, what areas or items in this classroom do you suspect has the most bacteria? This should really get students thinking. Before students begin collecting their samples, you first need to make sure you have the following items on hand. Petri dishes with agar jelly, large cotton swabs, gloves so as to prevent contamination, tape and sharpies to seal and label the petri dishes, and graphic organizers. There are many different types of graphic organizers you can use for this lesson. Using graphic organizers is a good scaffolding tool and a great way to differentiate learning. Once students have separated into their lab groups and have all materials, they may begin swabbing for bacteria throughout the classroom. Once students have sealed and labeled their petri dishes, they will need to place them in a warm area so as to allow the bacteria to grow. This is also a great time to ask questions so students may review the experiment in which they just participated. To incorporate ELA into this lesson, students will then begin thinking about an appropriate text structure to use for their lab report. Should they use a cause and effect structure, a sequential text structure, a problem and solution text structure? Once students have decided on a text structure for their written report, they should be able to justify their reasoning. After some time has passed, students can return to their petri dishes and examine the results. What area of the classroom had the most bacteria? How can we solve this problem? How can we reduce the number of illnesses we see this year? After pondering these questions and analyzing results, students will then be ready to finish their lab reports.